I was walking through Kemp Town on my way home after another disappointing visit to the job center, and too qualified apparently for the few vacancies on offer, when I saw a recruitment poster attached to a hoarding. Molly's Restaurants We are recruiting for staff for our new restaurant here in Brighton. Opening soon. Apply inside I thought, why not? Nothing to lose. There was an open doorway in the hoarding so I poked my head through and saw a newly renovated restaurant front with a notice on the door saying waitresses wanted. I thought you were supposed to say servers nowadays, anyway, maybe they are recruiting waiters as well so I went inside. There was a large restaurant area newly decorated and already furnished with tables and chairs. At one of them sat a young woman smartly dressed in black trouser suit. Hello, are you interested in one of our waitress vacancies? Well, obviously I wasn't, but perhaps there is something else. I'm looking for work, I replied. Please come and join me. My name's Heather, I'm the new branch manager. Would you like a cup of tea? No, thank you, I'm fine. I pulled out a chair and sat down opposite her. Could I have your name, please? Seb Johnson. Age and gender? Gender? 21, male. Occupation? I recently graduated from Sussex University. Really, what was your degree? Business management. Interesting. And are you working? No, no one is interested in a business management graduate with no experience, we are too a penny. And for those jobs that are available, I'm too qualified. I do need a job, any job, I have to pay my rent and I have my student loan to repay. Here at Molly's we only seek qualifications for our chefs, otherwise for all other staff we look for ability and presentation. And we pay our waitresses well above the minimum wage and you get to keep your tips. You said waitresses, do you have vacancies for waiters or any other positions? Apart from chef, obviously, I laughed. The only jobs I have left are front of house, they are very popular, but I think you would be suitable. What do you know about Molly's restaurants? Nothing, I don't think I've heard of them. We are a chain of upmarket restaurants located in areas popular with the LBGT community. We have been looking for premises here in Kemp Town for some time now. We are confident it will be one of our most successful, not only with the locals but with holiday makers visiting Brighton and Hove. You should join us now, once we are up and running we normally have waiting lists for front of house staff. Sorry, I still don't understand. Although it was starting to dawn on me. Well, a distinguishing feature of Molly's is that all front of house staff, including hostess, head waitress, waitresses, and sommelier, are male but dressed as their female counterparts. Have you worn women's clothing? No, I haven't, although I did play Juliet in a school production of Romeo and Juliet. How did that go? Actually, I was praised for my realistic performance. The drama teacher congratulated me for not being a boy in a dress. There you go then. Many of our girls are straight MTF cross-dressers, others are gay or gender fluid. We also employ pre-op transgender women, but not after they have fully transitioned. MTF? Male to female. But I'm not a cross-dresser, MTF or otherwise, and I've no desire to be one. You didn't have to be a cross-dresser to play Juliet, so you don't have to be a cross-dresser to wear a waitress uniform to do your job, they would be your work clothes. I'm not sure, I would be a laughing stock or get unwanted attention. Our guests come here to enjoy being served by young men dressed as pretty girls as part of their holiday or night out. We do have security staff on the door, our menu prices are expensive and we have a strict dress code. So, let us say, those who want to make fun or trouble are more likely to go to one of the nearby pubs with a drag show than come here. Molly's is a very respectable brand. I must admit, I would do anything to get a job, but I think dressing up as a woman would be too much for me. It wasn't too much for the school play, and that was in front of your school friends and I'm sure your parents too. Heather paused while looking at me. I like you, Seb. Can you do something for me? Can you let your hair down? I released my ponytail and my hair fell either side of my face. I had naturally blonde hair. I had allowed it to grow long and I tied it in a low ponytail. Of course. It is my intention to get it cut when I finally get a job interview. 
While I'm interviewing you now and I see potential in you, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will hold a vacancy open for you until noon tomorrow. Why don't you sleep on it and let me know tomorrow morning your decision? What I can say is that I would be surprised if you haven't paid off your student loan in a few years. And don't cut your hair, not yet. I had serious doubts, but I thought I should show my appreciation and consider the offer. She was very nice and sincere. Thank you, Heather. I'll let you know one way or the other tomorrow. Next Monday, we start staff induction and training in time for the opening the following week. You can change your mind during the induction, as indeed we can if you don't measure up. And you can give notice at any time, as is your right. You have nothing to lose. See you tomorrow, Seb. When I got home I went online. First to the Molly's Restaurant's website. It was everything Heather said. The diners looked very respectable and the menu prices were way beyond my means. But I couldn't believe the staff. They couldn't possibly be men. No drag artists at Molly's. But I saw a problem. The lunchtime uniform was quite respectable but the evening dinner uniform was too much for me. I then looked at the reviews, they were nearly all four or five stars, those who weren't usually related to obscure or frivolous complaints but never about men dressed as women. I next looked at job websites. It was the same depressing picture since I entered the job market. And anyway I would never pay off my debt unless I earned substantially more than the minimum wage or what the gig economy pays. And finally I got out my Juliet photos. Looking back I did enjoy playing the part and the reaction I got. I hadn't realized how pretty I looked. I was 17 at the time and hadn't changed much. But the photo that got me was of mom and dad with their arms around me looking proud and pleased as punch. I had on a white sleeveless floor-length gown gathered below my false bosoms. I was wearing a brown waist-length wig and for some reason that I don't remember why, high heels. It was also the time I stopped cutting my hair. I slept on it, as Heather suggested, and by the morning I couldn't think of any reason not to take the job, other than it didn't seem right. But being out of work and in debt wasn't right either. In the end it was only when I entered the nearly ready restaurant just before noon that I finally made up my mind. Good morning, Seb. Do you have good news for me? Yes, I accept your kind offer, thank you. Oh, wonderful. I think you are going to be one of our best employees, a pretty waitress to woo the diners, an intelligent waitress to make the most of her opportunities. By the way, we always refer to our front of house staff using female pronouns and terms, it is less confusing. Thank you, I think. I understand the pronouns thing, it makes sense. I have a request, can I keep to the lunchtime shift? Yes of course you can. In fact all our waitresses start with serving lunches and have to earn a place on the evening shift. It pays more, but more importantly they get bigger tips. Thank you. We then discussed pay and conditions. They were generous, higher than I could have ever expected, even more than a graduate salary, and my uniforms, cosmetics and even underwear were provided. And lunch at the end of the shift. Now please bring ID and your national insurance number with you on Monday. Also, though not required, your educational certificates, including your degree, would be useful for my records. Now please report at 10 a.m. on Monday. Dress as you usually do, but before then please remove your body hair, you can shave or use a lotion, and have a close shave in the morning. It suddenly hit me what I had let myself in for, but I was hairless for the school play and it all soon grew back. Yes, of course. And, Seb, if you change your mind please let me know. I have eager candidates on a waiting list. See you Monday. I'll be here, by Heather. As I left, I still had some misgivings. I was curious about what may be in store for me but I now had a job with a decent wage. I did turn up on time on Monday suitably shaved and still apprehensive. There were six of us young men, three dressed as women. Good morning, girls, announced Heather. Welcome to Molly's new restaurant here in Brighton opening next week. You have all accepted our employment offers as waitresses. You will be part of the lunchtime shift, at least four of you will be on duty at any one time. The rest of the restaurant staff are being transferred from other branches. 
You are the newbies, this week I will introduce you to the Molly's family and provide you with basic training. But first let's turn you into pretty waitresses. By the end of the day I was feeling a little more comfortable, I was quite sure I could be a competent server and at least I look like a waitress and not like a fantasy maid. The uniform was quite simple. A white shirt with an open neck and three-quarter length sleeves. A black flared skirt to just above the knee. Black shirt tights and black shoes with a choice of heels, but we had to be wearing court shoes with three-inch stiletto heels within a reasonable length of time. The outline of the bra could be seen through the shirt, I think it was deliberate. The shirt and dress between helped to give an illusion of a female shape without the need for padding, as indeed when I played Juliet. They gave me a simple makeover that brought out my eyes without overdoing it and with foundation just heavier enough to mask my five o'clock shadow, while until five o'clock when it was time to get dressed in my normal clothes again. I was expected to do my own makeup once I was proficient. Seb, could I have a word? asked Heather as I was about to leave to go home. Yes, of course. I'm not in a hurry. Not that you would say anything different to your boss. How was today? Are you still with us? She said with a friendly smile. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I do feel comfortable now seeing myself in the uniform and made up, I don't think I'm going to be too embarrassed. And we got on well together, I think we will make a great team. When you had your uniform on, you looked very pretty. Thank you, I think. I have a staff hairdresser coming in on Fridays. While she is here she can tidy up your hair, you have split ends and could do with a trim. You can then wear it in a feminine style when working and in your usual ponytail when you go home. Have you thought about a name? Seb? We can do that, but I recommend a girl's name. You may prefer to have some anonymity. I haven't thought about that. I have no idea. What about Juliet? Okay, that's cool. At least I was used to being called Juliet when I played her. Great, I'll get your name badge made up. Good night, Seb. I'll call you Seb or Juliet depending how you are dressed. Good night, Heather. See you tomorrow. As I walked home I thought about the day, I was pleased with the outcome. I wasn't sure if it was because I had a job at long last or perhaps it was the job. If I'm honest with myself it was probably both. I started my waitress duties the following week. We were busy right from the start and it was just a whirlwind all through the lunchtime and into mid-afternoon. It was more than just serving people their food, I had to know the menu and maintain a good rapport with the customers on my table. I received many comments on my, shall I say femininity, which gave me satisfaction, and the occasional quip about the way I was dressed, usually from an uncomfortable male member of a party. Very few barbs. But the tips were beyond my expectations, with my generous wages I was going to make a serious stent in my student loan. I settled into the routine. I walked to and from home in my waitress uniform, just leaving the heels at the restaurant. I did my hair and makeup at home. I bought a rain jacket and I wore my trainers, they were plain so didn't look odd. Heather gave me an old shoulder bag of hers, to look the part she said, but it was handy as I had no pockets. At home, and on my days off, I reverted to being my normal self. Juliet, can you come into the office please? It was near the end of my shift, so I was glad of the chance to sit down. It is the time of the year when I conduct staff reviews. You've been here long enough for me to make an assessment and to look at your development. It is all confidential, of course. I knew about staff appraisals, we covered them at university, but I wasn't expecting one as a waitress. I understand. Good, first the good news. You are the best performing waitress of your cohort. Your tables bring in the highest revenue, you are a star. But not only that, you have been judged as the prettiest and the most convincing of our waitresses, including amongst the dinner shift. How could that be? The evening waitresses all have breasts. You may not have real breasts under your shirt, but you have made the effort. Look at your nails, they are long, neatly shaped and with clear varnish. And you have been styling your hair. When I'm serving or clearing the table, my hands are on show. So I decided that they should be properly manicured. 
There was a noticeable uplift in the tips left by my customers. But using clear varnish, they are not so noticeable when not at work. The same with my eyebrows, I have shaped them to be more feminine, but not too thin. My hair was the hairdresser's suggestion when I asked her how I could look more feminine when working but still look like a man when I'm not. You are clever, Juliet. I like that about you. The receptionists are reporting that you are bringing in repeat business with customers asking to be seated at your tables. Gosh, is that true? I wondered why I was always busy. Where do you see yourself, and say, this time next year? I have every intention of still being one of your waitresses. I do enjoy working here. By then I would hope to be close to paying off my student loan and to start saving a deposit for my own flat. I have no other plans, besides who would want a male business management graduate whose only work experience is waitressing. Oh, I don't know, you could find such a position. I have a suggestion, to progress you need to gain experience on the evening shift. Your wages will increase and the evening crowd are bigger tippers, you will be well on your way to saving up that deposit. But I don't have breasts, so I couldn't wear the uniform. I know, but I think you should give it serious consideration. You could opt for breast augmentation, you can always have the implants removed later. Alternatively, you can have hormone therapy, or both, but I think that both would be too much. Quite frankly, you will be best advised to go for therapy. You would see other improvements which would enhance your appearance and popularity with the customers. I understand it is possible to stop the therapy and revert back, provided you don't wait too long. But by then you should be able to move on and we will not require you to have breasts. Don't say anything now, think about it and then come and talk to me. Will you do that for me, Juliet? Since you put it that way, I will do so. Thank you, Seb. I think she said Seb to sound more sincere. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I never even considered joining the evening shift. They are more experienced having been transferred from other branches. The dinner business is too valuable to trust to recently employed waitresses. The lunch shift is for us. Of course, they are still young men, but with breasts. There are times when I've been envious, I'm a perfectionist and will go that extra mile, but this is more like a hundred miles. But if I'm honest the additional money would be good. But what about when I'm away from work? At first it would be okay taking hormones, but after a while my breasts would show. But I never go out, my life is Molly's and being a waitress. And as Heather said, it would not be an irreversible decision at first. I wondered what she meant about not needing breasts when I move on. It took me a week to decide, I said yes. In the end it was the money and job security that did it. Heather arranged for me to see the company doctor. I have an irrational fear of operations, so I decided on therapy. And, as I said, I'm a perfectionist after all. I carried on with the lunchtime shift until, with some help, I passed the cleavage test. I then was issued with the black satin evening uniform. It was a tight bone strapless body and a full short over skirt. I also wore sheer black tights but my heels were now 4 inch. Nothing else, no frillies or French made costume attributes. The house style was smart and sexy, not erotic. There was a strict customer dress code, but even a smartly dressed diner could have wayward hands. I took it in the spirit intended. I was never hurt or sexually assaulted but I received very generous tips. I did get on well with the other waitresses, but I think they thought I was Heather's protege and they didn't want to upset her. She was a good boss. Later they may have been proved right, because I have been promoted to head waitress. I was now in charge of all the waitresses on both shifts. I wear the uniform appropriate to the shift. My pay went up, again, but my tips went down as I no longer had my own tables. But I made up for it with overtime now I have responsibilities for both day and evening shifts. Then one day, Heather called me into her office. Juliet, sit down please. I have some news. I'm being promoted. We are opening a new branch in Southampton and Molly's has created a new post of regional manager for the South Coast. I will be responsible for both the Southampton and Brighton branches. I was pleased for Heather, but felt sad she would no longer be my boss. 
congratulations, I'll be sorry to see you go. Oh, I'm not going. I will be based here. My heart leapt, I'm not sure why. But that is not why I want to speak to you. You know the restaurant well now, having worked at lunchtime and in the evening and have gained experience in management as head waitress. And you are a graduate in business management. I want to offer you the job as branch manager here. Of course, I will still be your boss. Wow, that was unexpected. Thank you, I would love to take the job. It puts me on my originally intended career path. Actually, although you were head waitress, you were very much a junior manager and demonstrated your abilities and my faith in you. That is very kind of you to say. Now as branch manager, you no longer need to wear a uniform and you can dress as you like, provided you comply with the restaurant dress code. You are no longer required to cross-dress or indeed you may have your breasts removed. So I can come to work dressed normally, as a man that is. Yes, as a manager you can dress in your gender, just as I dress as a woman because I am a woman. But give it some thought. You present as a lovely woman with a wonderful outgoing personality who has confidence in herself. And we all know and love you as Juliet, even though we are aware you are really a young man, as are the front of house staff. I must admit, I do enjoy my work and get on with my colleagues and am comfortable with the way I look and are treated. But when I am not at work, I revert to being Seb, although my look is more androgynous now and I do have breasts to hide which has meant that I haven't been socializing or going out. Oh, I hadn't realized that. I just assumed you were cross-dressing full-time like the other waitresses. Working here is my life and besides when I get home I am tired and quite happy to just relax in jeans and a sweatshirt. But I do want to settle down with a partner in due course. Seb, the job is yours as of Monday, when your first task will be to appoint a new head waitress. All you have to do is to decide what to wear. But of course, if you decide to dress as a man you will need to wind back the feminization you have undergone since you started here. That is a lot to think about and sort out. Why don't you buy yourself a women's business suit and wear it on Monday? That is all you need to do at present. And then give yourself time to think about transforming yourself back to presenting as a man at work. Thank you very much Heather for the promotion and the advice. I wouldn't be here today, with my student loan paid off and now saving for a deposit if it wasn't for your faith in me. I decided what to do as soon as I left her office. That was it. She had faith in me. I will continue to dress as a woman for the time being, I can always change my mind in due course and prepare to come to work as the man I am. On Monday I was wearing a black, it had to be black given what everybody else was wearing, sleeveless body form knee length dress with a narrow V neck showing a modest cleavage. I was actually proud of my newly developed feminine shape and I wanted to show it off, however I wanted to be taken as a smart young professional and so resisted a low cut neckline and a short skirt. I teamed it with a short jacket with a nipped in waist. I kept to the daytime 3 inch heels and sheer sure black tights. I didn't wear my usual high ponytail and had brushed out my hair to frame my face. No problem now with my hair dangling over food. I reported to Heather in her office. As I walked and I saw her sitting in the visitor's chair in front of her empty desk. Good morning, Juliet. I'm so glad it's Juliet and not Seb welcome to your office. Thank you, but what about you? I've moved upstairs to a new office. You need to be on the ground floor. This is your restaurant now. It was all sinking in, the change in my life. I will always think of it as your restaurant. You were the first branch manager. That's nice of you to say so. Talking nice, that suit becomes you. I'm glad you chose a dress as I had always admired your legs. Funny, really I normally wear trousers and I'm a woman and you are wearing a dress and you are a man. But you do look good in your trousers. She did, quite sexy really. They were a slim fit and tapered down to a delicate pair of ankles and killer heels. I have a little gift for you, to celebrate the first day of your new career in management. She handed me a thin rectangular jewelry box. I opened and inside was a jade pendant with a thin gold chain. Oh this is beautiful, you should not have done this. It is all my pleasure and to thank you for your work as a waitress, you have contributed greatly to the success of this branch as I always knew you would. 
She took the pendant out of the box. Let me. I held my hair out of the way as she placed it round my neck and closed the clasp. This was my first piece of jewelry. I noticed how it brought attention to my cleavage, not quite what I intended with this dress. I loved my new job, being a manager had always been my ambition and now I was one, well, a manageress. I never really gave it much more thought about coming to work as Seb, I fitted in very well as Juliet and I think the waitresses appreciated it that their boss was a cross-dresser. Over time I started buying more clothes for work, including for the evening an LBD that hugged my body with a low-cut neckline that fully exposed my breasts, but not my nipples of course, and a hem that stopped halfway down my thighs. I also bought a floaty chiffon dress. Both in the usual black, I was at work. And of course I now had to attend meetings away from the restaurant. When it got colder, I bought a coat and a pair of knee-high boots, with stiletto heels. All my shoes had stiletto heels, it never occurred to me to try anything else. And a shoulder bag and briefcase. And now I walked to and from work smartly dressed as a young woman. I settled down into my new role. Heather was always there to help me, but she spent most of her time on the Southampton project. And with my new salary I was able to get a mortgage and my savings from waitressing were enough for a deposit. I bought my own flat. Juliet, you don't have to be here every day. You should take some time off, said Heather as we were having our mid-morning coffee break. This is my life, Molly's is my family as you referred to way back on my first day. I'm very happy. Why not enjoy yourself? Life is not all just work. What do you do when you are not here? I stay in, I have more or less finished decorating and furnishing the flat the way I want it. You need to get out. I can hardly go out the way I look. I can get away with it when I go shopping, but I would fall at the first hurdle if I met someone socially. What do you mean? You look very natural to me. But I look like a girl. Well, to me, you are a girl, a very attractive young woman. But I'm a man, and looking like a man with breasts is embarrassing, even in Brighton. And besides, my women's clothes are for work. Otherwise I dress in my normal clothes. Why not dress as a woman? The way you are now. There is no visible sign you are male. I'll tell you what. The weather this weekend is forecast to be warm and sunny. Take the rest of the day off and go and buy yourself a pretty summer dress, you can afford it now. And don't forget matching shoes and a bag. Actually, as your boss I order you too. Yes ma'am. I wasn't sure about it, but kind Heather has always given me good advice and it would be rude to ignore her. I'll see you tomorrow. I grabbed my bag and left as I was, better I shop for a dress wearing my work dress than going home to change into my jeans and loose sweatshirt. I wandered around the city center, it was the first time I had been out dressed as a woman when not working instead of the androgynous male I had become. Eventually I spotted a dress in an independent dress shop window in the lanes that I thought would suit me. It was a summer dress, as Heather had ordered, with a full knee-length skirt, a wide round neck and cap sleeves. It was white with a floral pattern in black and red. I plucked up the courage and went in. All my female clothes up to now had been supplied by Molly's or had been bought online. Good morning, said the middle-aged dressed assistant, or maybe she was the owner. Can I help you, madam? Madam! I've never been called madam before. I kind of liked it. Hi, I am interested in the white dress in the window. It is a pretty dress. It would flatter you. What size are you? Fortunately, I knew this one. Sixteen. You are lucky. I have a size 16 in stock, it is the largest they do. Would you like to try it on? Oh, I wasn't expecting that, I don't think I'm ready. I must ask Heather for her advice. I'm in a bit of a hurry, I have to get back to work. I'll take it as is. At least being dressed for work didn't undermine my white lie. Well if it doesn't fit or you change your mind, do not hesitate to bring it back. Can I suggest a short slip to wear with it? You young ladies don't know what it is like to wear one, it fills out the skirt and adds to the swing when you walk and move. There is a matching bra and knickers, you are a B cup I see. A slip, what's a slip? I better yes so as not to show my ignorance. 
Yes, please. You won't regret it. She took a dress from a rail in the shop and folded it up and put it into a bag. She took a slip from a drawer and added it to the dress. It was white underskirt with an elasticated waist and a pretty lace trim. Now I know what a slip was. Then she added the bra and knickers. I wasn't expecting that, I supposed I didn't say yes or no. Cash or card, madam? Cash, please. I supposed I should get a card in the name of Juliet, paying by cash is getting rarer. I left the shop carrying my first dress shop bag for all to see. On one hand I was still uncertain about what I had done, on the other hand I was now intrigued. Heather advised me to get some shoes. My work shoes would look odd, so I decided to take up her advice, again. I won't bore you with my tour of the shoe shops, I just couldn't make up my mind. But in the end I did. I bought a white pair of delicate strappy open-toed sandals with three-inch stiletto heels. They would go perfectly with the dress and a small white book-sized bag with a long thin shoulder strap I saw earlier. I went back to buy the shoulder bag and a matching wide belt and then headed home. I arrived back at the same time I usually do unless I'm working late, I had been shopping for six hours. Normally it takes me six minutes. I changed out of my work clothes and removed my makeup and put my hair into my usual low ponytail and then fixed myself some food, leaving early and missed out on a staff meal. I settled down to relax and listen to some music, but kept thinking about my unexpected shopping expedition and whether to go out tomorrow or stay in. Heather was right, the weather was going to be warm and sunny. Wearing anything more than a t-shirt was going to be uncomfortable, but only a t-shirt was going to be embarrassing. So I decided to go out in my new dress, a first for Juliet. It was a new routine that morning. I have to thank the lady in the dress shop. All my bras and knickers are black, I needed nothing else for work. They had to be white with my new dress. I took out the knickers and bra from the bag and slipped them on and, wow, did they feel nice. No wonder they are called delicates. I looked at myself in the mirror, I did look pretty in lace underwear. I then stepped into the slip, the wide lace trim matched, and pulled it up to my waist. Now the dress, I think it may have been easier to pull on the slip afterwards. When I had zipped it up it fitted perfectly, no embarrassing return to the shop. I put on the belt and I was taken aback when I looked into the mirror. The belt accentuated my already trim waist and the full skirt my hips. Of course, I had to give myself a twirl. I fetched the shoes and slipped one on. I only had black tights, but I didn't need them. My naked legs were smooth and unblemished. As I did, I realized that my toes would show. My fingernails were bright red, so I fetched my nail varnish, I only had the one color, and painted my toenails to match. It was more difficult than I would have expected. Once dry I put both shoes on and did up the straps. I brushed my hair and put it into a high ponytail which seemed right for such a day out. I checked my appearance. Heather was right, yet again, I did look like a pretty young woman even without makeup. I grabbed my phone, wallet and keys and put them in my bag, I suppose there should be other items, and went out and headed to the city center. I planned to have a coffee sitting outside one of the seafront cafes. The sun was out and I realized what I needed were sunglasses, so popped into shop and bought a pair with large lenses and white frames. Perfect. I settled down with my coffee and watched locals and holidaymakers walking by. I was miles away thinking about what Heather had initiated. If I can dress as a woman for work, why not dress as a woman for leisure, especially dressing as a man with a woman's body would be embarrassing. When someone asked, is this seat taken? I could hardly say yes, I was on my own. I smiled and replied, no, he was a young man probably just a few years older than me and quite handsome. Then I recognized him, his name was Andy he was on the same course at university. I heard some of the girls talk about him, he was kind and considerate and not forward. I hope he doesn't recognize me, I'm so pleased I bought these sunglasses. Unfortunately I had hardly started my drink so I couldn't really get up and leave and I didn't have a magazine I could carry on reading so I just sat there looking out to see. After a while Andy spoke. Lovely day. Typical English, talking about the weather. Yes, 
It is. Isn't it? I hope it doesn't rain. What else was I going to say? I don't think it will. The forecast was dry, but you never can be sure, he paused and reached out. My name's Andy. I knew that. At least we had moved on from the weather. I took his hand, remembering just in time that I was supposed to be a woman. Hello Andy, I'm Juliet. Pleased to meet you. I wonder if you would respond with a tiresome Romeo wisecrack, as some of the restaurant customers do. Hello, Juliet. Nice to meet you too. Well he didn't, one up for Andy. And what does Juliet do? I'm a restaurant manager. I suddenly felt proud. I never actually told anybody before. I hope he doesn't ask which one, better ask what he does. What do you do? I'm a supervisor in a broker's office, but I'm to be promoted to management soon. I was pleased, despite being a woman, at work that is, I'm doing better than one of my classmates. We carried on talking, he was as personable and entertaining as I remembered him. After we finished our second coffees, I insisted on paying, I'm a modern woman I told him. He asked if I would like to accompany him along the promenade. Well it was what Heather ordered, get out and meet people, so I thought why not, and said yes. Just the right weather, sunny with a gentle sea breeze. As we were walking, I became so fascinated with the light clicking of my heels, so different from the sound of my other shoes, and the movement of the skirt of my dress and slip against my bare legs. And a new sensation of the breeze under my skirt. When Andy offered me his arm I took it without thinking. And I liked it. In the eyes of passers-by, it looked so normal. Again we were so absorbed with our conversation that we reached Hove before we realized it. I was also pleased I was handling the heels, I hadn't planned to walk so far in them, but then I probably walked further in the restaurant during a shift as a waitress and in higher heels. Would you like to join me for lunch? asked Andy politely. Yes, I would like that. I found myself answering. There was a restaurant nearby on the upper floor of a two-story building. We made our way over to it and managed to get a table with a sea view that had just been vacated. I decided it was time to take off my sunglasses and hope Andy doesn't recognize me, but I should now well and truly be Juliet in his mind. We spent two hours over an excellent lunch. Andy insisted on paying, now I felt like a woman. We walked back to the city center, again arm in arm. As we got close to the center, we saw an empty bench. Andy steered me towards it and we sat down. I sat close to him and with my legs slanted away from him our thighs inevitably touched. I looked down at my skirt spread out before me and my hands together on my lap holding my bag, my long bright nails showing. I had never felt so feminine, everything seemed so perfect, this is me now. My social life had caught up with my work life. I'm afraid I have an engagement this evening, but perhaps I may see you again, he asked. Yes, that would be nice, I genuinely replied. He had been good company and had behaved himself. I could do it again and I did enjoy being out in a pretty dress and being treated as a woman. We exchanged phone numbers, and before he left I gave him a kiss on his cheek. The first time I had ever kissed a man, even though it was just a peck. Dressed like this it seemed so natural and he deserved it. On Monday, Heather and I were having our morning coffee. I had been negotiating with the representative of the company that supplied our uniforms. My suggestion that the receptionists should wear a different uniform to the waitresses, so customers would not be confused, had been accepted. So did you take up my advice? Did you buy a dress? Yes, I did, you were right. I'm going to buy some more non-wear clothes that suit, shall I say, my apparent gender and not my real one. Good for you. So you went out then, what did you do? Did you meet anybody? I told her the whole story, as well as my boss she had become my best friend and confidant. So are you going to see him again? Yes, but it will be purely platonic. Surely not. Wasn't he handsome? I enjoy being a woman in his company and I wondered, with the hormonal changes I have been through in dressing and looking like a natural woman, that I might have felt differently about having a boyfriend. I tested the water and I'm definitely not gay. You are straight? As a man that is. 
I always wondered, but didn't want to ask. You are the most convincing crossdresser on our books and the prettiest amongst all our staff, male and female. Yes, I'm straight. I now have a career. I own my own flat and have replaced my student loan debt with a mortgage. I'm an eligible young man in his late twenties. How am I going to find a true girlfriend looking like this? Don't get me wrong, I love the life I lead and after this weekend enjoying being out and about in a pretty dress I've decided to live as a woman full time. I'm so happy to hear that. Heather put her hand on mine. In that case, I would very much like to be your Romeo, if you would have me. My heart leapt. I would like that.